Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. Al, every time they, I hear the big voice guy, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's time to go to work. This is Nebraska Preps post game. That's my man, Jacob Padilla. I like to say JP. I'm sure I'm not the 80th person to ever go there. It's kind of like ODB. Everybody says that. But is Jacob okay, or do you want me to be more professional after all these years? Honestly, you can call me whatever you want. I'll I like, probably respond. I like JP, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people have called me that. Um, Got a bro- job, something like that? I think my uh, brother uses that one a little bit more than I do. Um, yeah. He's got his Twitter handle, so we're both JPs. So um, Yeah, because he's a Jordan. Correct. So. Yeah, that's funny. The Phoenix Suns fan likes the namesake of the team that basically pulled the <laughs> rug from under the Suns. That was a different era of the Suns way before I uh, was paying attention, but my brother is named after Michael Jordan. Yeah, that was like, do you know Kevin Johnson for anything other than politics? <laughs> and I, Barkley I, yes. for anything other than TNT? Yes, I, <laughs> I am aware of both of them as players. Um Chuck's a little bit easier to root for than Kevin Johnson at this point. Um, no, 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 Tom, no Tom Chambers love. No, well, Chambers is on the the broadcast for the Suns now, so I see plenty of him. And you do love Na- Nash is like your yes. guy. That that's is your why, con- that is your quintessential creme de la creme. Yep, that's why I'm a Suns fan and why I love basketball as much as I do. It's kind of all started back with that. Um, well, they should have named you Nash. <laughs> Was Nash Bridges around back then yet? Yeah, I uh, actually watched that. Um, they should have named. They should have named you Nash. Yeah, that that would have been great because that's <laughs> the best they could do if they already had a Jordan, <laughs> right? Well, uh, again, uh, they didn't know yeah, at the time. It's was, not like there was any foreshadowing. That was a hmm, long. I, time I think this little guy is really going to grow up to have a a thing for Steve Nash. Let's go with Nash. My dad's name is already Steve, so can can go with that. So wow. Bizarro world, the more you know. <laughs> Speaking of bizarro world, not a ton of, um, we'll start in A, right? Yeah. Kind of an uneventful week, a little ho-hum outside of probably West Side and Millard West, right? Yeah, that was probably the biggest game, although I will say I was at um, Lincoln East on Thursday when the Spartans knocked off uh, Lincoln Pius yeah. the 10th. So that was probably the biggest result in terms of kind of a surprise last week. I. Uh, I always, and I know, so for anybody that's not kind of familiar with your style, you're a scorebook guy, you're constantly grinding, you don't often use social media while the game is going until big breaks because, yep. I mean, you're that guy. Keeping my book, trying to keep my notes running. Uh, so I'm watching the feed and I'm following your Twitter line as I'm watching and I'm, I'm looking for a little insight, right? Because all I can see is how nobody can stay in front of Carter Glenn. And so I just want you to be able to say, like on Twitter, wow, Carter Glenn, she, whether it's a short area quickness, whether it's a lack of communication, because I know fans are starting yeah. to, to come, but you can still hear quite a bit. Uh, was that the first time you thought Pius had seen Carter Glenn? <laughs> well, it was because he didn't play in I know, the first he missed game. The, yeah, he missed the first one. He still made that a close game. Yeah. So there's just something about that matchup for Pius that they struggled with. But, yeah, Glenn was the best player on the floor, and he did it. The toughest thing about him in that game is he was just scoring at all three levels. His pull-up jumper, he's got that thing down. Yeah, he so had the right one now. from the elbow that yeah. was so pretty. He gets good elevation. He's already got yeah. kind of sneaky length. Yeah. I think that surprises some people sometimes, don't you? Yeah, and so he three of five from three, hit two, three, four uh, mid-range pull-ups, and then went and finished at the rim a couple of tough times too. And that game, was it was a one-point game in the fourth quarter. Um, Sam easily came off the bench and gave uh, Pius a spark there. Six points early in the fourth quarter there. Um, got it down to 50-49, and then East hit him with a 9-0 run. And that was ball game at that point, basically. Um, they hit a couple of shots late, tried to get back into it, but he held on to the ball, made enough free throws to, to close it out. But And it's something you've talked about. I think a little bit of a Pius and shot selection got away from them. Yeah, I so I, I'm kind of convinced now, right? Like <laughs> I've been saying this for about three or four weeks, and I'm I'm like, well, is this kind of an aberration? I, I think that's just how they play. Coach Spitzka likes tempo, and with a little bit of that, you're going to give up some of the shot selection, but – the fourth quarter got away from Pius, in, in my opinion, in terms of getting quality shots. But I will say this. That is two of the better coaches in the state, especially in, in, in Class A with Coach Campbell and, and Coach Spitzka. 
those 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 are two quality coaches. And as good as Carter Glenn was, the guy that swung that game was uh, Henriksen. Um, career high twenty, I believe. Um, finished everything around the basket and when create a couple of his own too. It wasn't just all dump offs up from those guards. I was going to ask you. Ones. So, you know, I'm kind of doing the gestures as I see him kind of, whether he's pump faking or using his footwork or a scoop shot. Has he kind of, in your opinion, always been that crafty around the rim with that kind of touch? See, that, that was the first time that I've really seen him play in person. Uh, I've seen a little bit. I've kind of watched a little bit of there on videos and I haven't seen a ton. And you look at his numbers, he's not double digit score or anything. Yeah. So that was he, he stepped up big time in one of their biggest games and really delivered. And like I said, there were a couple couple nice post moves in addition to there's a putback or two, and then outside of that, he's finishing off those pick-and-roll um, plays from those guards with Glenn and uh, Braden McPhail. So he had a great game there and really changed it. Now, maybe we'll know more after this week because um, there's a big one looming. Actually, two. Uh, they both feature Omaha West Side because they get Central – and Lincoln East on back-to-backers Friday, Saturday. Have you seen enough now to flip-flop Pius and Central? Uh, yeah, I think we'll see on Friday, like you said, uh, Westside. But from what I've seen um, at this point, I think Central, um, I'm good with Central at four. Pius, it's just, uh, it's only their second loss. Um, but And obviously the first loss was against Bellevue West, so there's no shame in that. I mean, Central's losses are against Miller North. so um, You just kind of feel like you know who they're going to be. Yes. I, I, I think I think there's just a little bit more there in terms of, of guys that you can rely on a little bit versus Pius, where uh, Sam Hostrider played really well in that game, but they just didn't get quite enough. I really like his game. Yeah. And he's, he's really coming along. There's he, a he's, lot of skills there. Right? And I, he's... Um, and maybe there's some fine line between efficiency and him not asserting himself enough. So maybe he's efficient because he doesn't take – he plays under control. But, man, and he's got some he's got some tools in his bag. And they got away from him in the second half after he kind of kept them alive in the first half. Um, and that, that ended up costing him. He only had a few shots in the second half and ended up with 18 points. Um, but – Again, didn't didn't do much after halftime. So, what do you think we know about Lincoln East? Um, we know Carter Glenn's going to go out there and just leave it out there. That dude is one of the toughest players in the state. Yeah. Uh, he probably shouldn't be playing basketball right now. He needs shoulder surgery. Uh, he took a shot to the mouth, was bleeding, had to go um, get stitches after the game, but only missed a, a couple minutes of game time. Came back and finished it. Um, so, like you know, you're going to get a great effort out of him. Every night. Shots aren't always going to fall at the same rate, but he is going to lay it all out there. And then after that, I think that's kind of where they're looking for other guys. Uh, Brayden McPhail is probably their next most talented player. He's a, he's a good pick-and-roll guard, uh, crafty offensive. He really gets after Younger brother defense. of uh, – was it Jordan? Uh, no, it's uh, – uh, I had Jordan on the brain yeah. probably because of your brother. Uh, I think he wore five, right? One of my favorite guards. He played with Sam Greasel and yes. those guys early. I remember watching him. I almost want to say he wore five. Um, he was kind of a do-everything. Savvy, savvy. Hunter Point McPhail. For, Hunter McPhail. Okay, gotcha. Um, is, is is little brother in that same vein? I do like the reference to the two-man game, right, because he's kind of crafty with the basketball. Not a great scorer, but you leave him, and he can knock it down. Yep. So it's kind of those guards are going to set the tone every single night, and then – they got to find, again, like a Henriksen, Trevor Henriksen in that game was phenomenal. They got to get something like that. Not necessarily one guy going off for 20, but they need some some of those guys off that bench or the the two, three, um, two, three spots there to kind of fill in um, uh, some little extra offense there in addition to what you're going to get out of those two. So that's kind of – I think that's what East is at this point uh, is – Depending on how the game goes, is depending on what they get from guys outside of the, those top couple. Ah, it sounds a lot like their girls team too, with the mirror images kind of running those hockey lines in and out. Lincoln East girls on a on a good four or five year run, and and uh, Pius, who we mentioned, another school that has double dip. Good girls team, <laughs> yeah. quality boys team, arguably the best girls team in the state. Although Millard South girls are playing really, well at the right. Yeah, they're starting to get really on a roll. Hey, Best shooting team in the state, and and when they turn you over, they'll turn your lights out. That's a, that's about what happens. Is we we quit kind of dovetail just all over the place, but uh, just to, just the combo of schools. Let's go back to the top with Bellevue West. Probably 
I think we know what we're getting. Could, could learn a lot this week, right? Because it's not an in-metro matchup or matchups, but they'll be tested. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, got a couple, and they handled Lincoln East coming off that. Yeah. Um, and Lincoln East could, yeah. that was kind of more the Lincoln East. We struggled to score. Again, it was Carter Glenn, 20 plus, and then nobody else yeah. really got going. And that's kind of uh, what we're talking about there. If they get more, they'll, they'll be tough. If they don't, then you get a, whatever the final score was on that one. So, yeah, big, big, week, big week for both Millard, uh, North and Bellevue West, just more for kind of showing what they've got and for the individual players in each team to kind of show, all right, we can stack up with these teams with the Heartland uh, Hoops Classic coming up next Saturday. Yeah, you've got Sunrise Christian Academy, and and, and uh, Bellevue West will have Waukee is on well, Tuesday um, well. Yeah. Um, well tomorrow. So um, it's, it's, it's a kind of a show-me week outside of the Metro – but let's get to number two because people will ho hum the ninety six point um, total on Saturday against North Star. North Star should be better than that. They're kind of an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. We got Southwest on. Uh, was North that North, yeah? Was they, they they beat North Star sorry, the previous? For, week. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when we see teams like that, and, and Millard North obviously was very upset after the Bell West game. Yeah. That was the that was the yeah. next night where they went out and almost scored a hundred. You're right. When you look at Millard North and what they're capable of doing, in your opinion, do you think that loss came at the right time, or is it what it is because it was Bellevue West? Yeah, I. It was definitely interesting, kind of the. Uh, the, the pregame kind of hype video um, and all that kind of going all They've out been all, all business yeah. since. Yeah. So so they come out that and then get humbled in that game. So you, you obviously you'd rather always be able to uh, to lose or to win in a uh, or learn in a win. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with uh, learning from a loss as well. And if it comes at the right time and you got and you react to it well, you understand what happened. That can be beneficial for you long term as long as um, again. Yeah, you, ve- you take very business like Friday night against the storm, right? Yeah. I, I watched them pregame, kind of watched them watching a little bit of the girls' game. They appear to. That's about as maybe they, you know, were like, "Hey, Elkhorn South," but they they typically have a little bit more of a vibe. They were that approach. I felt like was interesting. I'm like, gosh, I wonder if this is going to kind of be them the rest of the season with that business approach. And then again, Southwest uh, this weekend, Hunter Salas, 29 points, 11 offensive rebounds. Oh. So he was playing hard, obviously. How many times have we said this, you and I especially, just because we'll talk off off camera quite a bit, he's capable of being a stat sheet stuffer. Yeah. Whether it's offensive rebounds. We've seen him with some key ones in tight games. We, we know he's he's a good defensive rebounder. When he asserts himself on the defensive end, he's a guy that can get you a couple of two or three steals a game. He's good for a couple of blocks a game. For him, it's all about where he wants to exert his energy. And it seems like he's starting to turn it up a little bit the last uh, last couple yeah. of weeks. Um, obviously, like St. Thomas was the story of the first half of the season, and he was kind of leading the way for them. Recently, Hunter's kind of like, hey, I'm still here. Like, yeah, I'm here too, I, I, and I'm pretty it, good. And as much as a five-star can fly under the radar, there has – this is what I've seen in the last probably three and a half weeks, maybe a month. The appreciation for Chucky Hepburn has grown immensely, yeah. especially as they kind of can now see where Wisconsin has down the road envisioned in him filling in. I think the, the affinity and prowess has grown for Chucky, and – it's almost like Hunter is like, hey, you know what? I'm pretty talented, too. Let me just go ahead and kind of hit this light switch because he has really started to assert himself. And, again, this this will be a big showcase for him when they get Oak Hill. And that's – I was uh, I was blown away. Like, I was really impressed. That that IMG uh, Academy mm-hmm. game last yeah. year, um, that's the first game that I saw. I was like, okay, yeah, he belongs. He is he's right there with these guys. Like he was phenomenal in that game. He did. Yeah, they played good. well as yeah. a team. Yes, right. I I'm like, whoa. Well, this, this you know, I mean, both teams are right there going back and forth. It turned into a dunk yeah. fest. Both guys. I mean, both teams just kind of letting it fly a little bit. I I think he embraces the big stage like yep. this. And so he's got another one coming up on Saturday. So it's kind of a business like week for those top two teams. Creighton Prep, on the other hand, they found themselves in a couple of dogfights. Yeah, and so they beat. 
Papio uh, 5150 in overtime earlier in the week. And then I was there uh, on, on Saturday when uh, Lincoln Northeast cut it to a one point game. They were kind of throwing uh, a 3 2, 1 2 2 kind of zone at them, and Prep just could not throw it in the ocean from three. It got down to one point early in the fourth quarter. And then Prep closed the game on a 16-0 run. Yeah. So they kind of took care of business there. But it was early in the fourth quarter. That was still in doubt. So um, Prep, 2-0. But they, they didn't necessarily uh, – they, they weren't uh, dominating wins by any means. Going back to Friday night, um, watching, kind of watching that. Obviously, if you're a, a fan of, of, of Westside, you're watching the Papillion Monarchs. Not only does Papillion want Westside to do well, it's kind of vice versa as wild card points yeah. will continue to be important. So you've got a couple of guys in the right hand corner watching prep papillion just to kind of see if you can calculate those um wild card points coming up, which I believe they'll see it on the twenty third of February. Uh the girls are the sixteenth and I think the the boys are uh the twenty third. But uh having said that, that was a game in which the monarchs probably feel like they should have won. They turned the ball over two, three of their four last possessions in regulation. Didn't really give them a chance to win. It's 44-41 with a minute 15 to play. You're probably feeling pretty good. Just couldn't take care of the basketball. Yeah, and that that has to hurt um, for those guys coming out of that game, knowing you were right there at the same time. And led, good led, led probably, what, three quarters of that game? Yeah. 80% of that game? So. It's a good showing for them. They definitely have bounced back from kind of the struggles early in the year with how tough their schedule was. I think they've learned from that. Yeah, the Westside game surprised me. We agreed, right? Yeah. We the, the ease in which Westside won that game surprised yeah. me quite a bit. Uh, although Westside's playing pretty good ball right now, and they, I, they I will are. say um, they, they are. That's, yeah, they, that's, that's a good team. We, we talked about that, how big that Westside uh, Millard West game was for kind of standings and kind of guys showing who they really are, and they, they won that handily, just phenomenal defensive performance. Um, guys really stepped up there. And I, I will say, um, seems Logan Wilson coming off uh, that bench with Tate uh, Oddbody Hurt, he's played well. And the last four, he's averaged six points, seven rebounds, and two blocks in the last four games without with Oddbody out of the lineup. So Yeah, so that brings up an interesting dilemma. If you're just talking amongst the circle, it's the offensive prowess and spacing the floor of Oddbody versus – the defensive and and rebounding efforts of Logan, it will be very interesting to see how that kind of works because, and I said this, I think, on Twitter last week, the very offensive-minded Coach Simons has done a very good job, his staff in particular, uh, with their defensive scout. They really guard, and they take pride in guarding. And I think one of the big things – that's really helped them is weak side defense. Their guards will smother you. They yeah. very good defensive guards, and they force you. And then, you know, Logan has been able – even Reggie Thomas as a weak side defender, he usually draws probably the the third best offensive player. So sometimes, you know, he'll be away from the action and can really help out around the 10, and he's got such good bounce – um, they, they're on to something. Yeah, and that, that is a tough line when you've got uh, Wilson 6'4", 6'5", shot blocker, long arms at the rim, and then you've got just, just relentless guards at the other four spots. Yeah, they, they go deep in their talent in terms of guys that can really get after you, obviously. Caleb, um, that's what he's out there primarily doing, doing a good job of that. You, you've got Chandler and Reggie, who are both terrific on-ball defenders as well. So as long as Chandler can stay out of foul trouble – you got guys that can really get after opposing uh, yeah. ball handlers. He's got some up. luxuries, right? Because yeah. his freshman now guards the offense's yeah. best player every night out. And so you allow now Chandler to handle the ball more. You move Reggie off the ball. Uh, they're they, they, they're kind of starting to get that chemistry. And all of a sudden, Payson Gillespie finds himself getting a few more open looks yeah. again, and, and he's made folks pay. Yeah, so – I'm I'm planning to be there on Friday night. Uh, I'm not going to get to chance to get out to Hastings to watch the Oak Hill versus Sunrise game, but um, pretty good one here in, in the Metro um, as well with, with Central and uh, and Westside and two of the kind of you see a lot of five out looks from that. It, it's yeah. going to be a really fun matchup, I think, in terms of both teams are so similar physically. We talked last week about how Westside and Millard West was such a difference yeah, in styles contrast. 
Central and West Side, very, very similar. Multiple ball handers, a ton of space. Scout, weak side defense, keeping a foot in the paint, and who shoots it better? Can Central find some consistency from behind the arc? Because if they shoot it well, that's a that's a really dangerous basketball team, especially when they commit themselves to playing good defense. And, and that's kind of what's cost them in their big game so far is they just did not shoot the ball well enough for the, the way their team is built and some of the shots they were taking. And they've got guys that are capable of it, so now he got another big game. Can they step up uh, and rise to the occasion? So what? So I didn't want to be too down on Millard West, right? Because um, I think they bounced back the next thing. Right they went 60, 64, 47. I think yep. they held Gretna to fifteen to three in the third quarter. Yeah, that was kind of ball game. So Myersick and Connolly really, really physical. Um, they've got to find a way to kind of get into their offense in the backcourt. Westside guarded them ninety four feet. It was really disruptive for Millard West. They couldn't kind of get into a flow, but once they got into their half-court offense, God, you give a couple of their bigs paint touches, they're either getting fouled, and they were not good from the foul line against Westside, I believe, 4 of 17. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> That'll cost you every time. <laughs> something 6 of 17. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in the neighborhood, um, and it really didn't allow them to get into a rhythm. They turned around and bounced back. Against Gretna, because I wondered how that would be, because Gretna's a tough team to play against. And I know that they weren't happy with what happened with Westside. I th- actually thought that was a really good bounce back win for them and impressive fashion over Coach Feekin's bunch. Eight of 21 from the free that's throw what, line. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not going to get it done. And two of 13 from three. So Could, there couldn't, you go. Uh, you just didn't get a lot. Now, the three-point percentage, they didn't get a lot of clean looks. Yeah. It was it's it was just really hard for those guys to shake free. Well, they weren't much better inside the arc either. It's about 36 percent <laughs> from two, so it was just a phenomenal all around defensive performance by Westside. So, how are you kind of parsing through now? Now we're back to this seven, eight, nine, and eight, nine, ten. But like, we just keep moving them around. I think we like the Monarchs and the Warriors inside the top seven, right? We go Millard West. Eight Papio South nine, or Millard West ahead of Papio South. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure Papio South is in that mix right now. Yeah, um, especially the way they're playing. And we'll yeah. see what happens with with Denier. Yeah, uh, could be a, a, a big loss potentially. Yeah, and Daniel Brokale is stepping up at 32 points in their last game, trying to do all they can. But he's a handful. Yeah. Um, he he. You know the the one thing number one. He's kind of edgy. He's, yeah. he's a little chippy. He he plays so hard, like, and he's got good size people kind of stand next to him. He's a little bigger, a little stronger than maybe the film shows. He's 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 a big, strong kid. He uses his length well, too. And he's got good bounce. He, he gets off the floor pretty good for a big fella. Yeah, so I'm I'm still looking to see who is that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got, uh, we got Lincoln Southeast, potentially. Maybe. Um, Carney, I mean, they're... A lot of these teams, I, I'm not really seeing any of these teams kind of rising. I don't even know who nine ten is at this point. Gretna is maybe still in that mix, but they're so young. Like that's uh, there's a lot of those teams in in the kind of the mix there for the tail end of that top ten. But I I think you got to feel good about that top eight or so. Yeah, how important do you think hosting will be district for districts? It'll be interesting, especially with kind of what we're seeing with uh, crowds. crowds are opening up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, they're expanding it somewhat. So it could be uh, even more important than it might have been earlier in the season where kind of kept it a little bit more controlled. Um, so I, I think it, it could end up being important. And um, I haven't really checked on the, the home record for some of these teams, but um, so I don't have kind of numbers to back that up. But I mean, it's it's always easier to, to to play on your home court, and especially again with the limitations now, you're going to have more of your fans in there than the opposing team, uh, pretty much just by default. Um, Let's jump over to B real quick yeah. in our in our last couple of minutes. Um, we kind of previewed Wahoo Platteview in the turnaround game, which was going to be 72 hours later. Wahoo, in impressive fashion, finds a way to win at Platteview. We had the Norris game canceled with Elkhorn Mount Michael. 
Scut doing Scut things. Uh, how do you see the top five or six in B? You probably go Mount Michael, Norris, Scut. Yeah. Then Waverly. Do you like that four? Yeah, um, I I think that's probably that's pretty fluid. Yeah, um, especially um, Waverly. They looking at here. Um, um, they they went one and zero, oh, yeah. right? Uh, they yeah, that, they lost to Aurora, Aurora 41-33. Yeah. So that's kind of that gives you a little bit pause there. Aurora's um, capable of yeah. doing that though because they squeezed the rock. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and Aurora. Not a bad team, no. but not one of the best teams either. So if you feel like you're a top four team, so one and one, yes, yeah. And did did you did you knock Platteview down some? I that's tough. Like Wahoo, Wahoo's a good team. Um, they're C one, but how about their ability to bounce year. back? Yeah, and props to Marcus I mean, Glock ended up eighteen. Uh, Trevor uh, Krzyzewski, um twenty. Yeah, like, I think I think I think Marcus. Heard me talking to Coach Mosser saying, "Wow, that's interesting. I wonder if the if the athleticism on the court bugged him." Yeah, apparently it did. Yeah, not. He, no, he he learned <laughs> from what happened and, the first and time. I, and and I'm a back. fan. Yeah, yeah, Glock. He's so. Here's the thing that I like about Marcus Glock. He is crafty handling the ball. Yeah. He's not going to put it on a string and and just kind of go by you. But he understands angles and he can use both hands and it. He's a good finisher around the rim, aside from being a knockdown shooter. Yeah, and, and then he's really good at the free throw line, yeah. too. So if he gets that foul, like it's almost an automatic two points there. So he's, he's a guy that can score in a lot of different ways. And, again, 18 points. Like he's, I think he kind of hit that, that, that freshman wall a little bit just with the physicality of the game and was struggling yeah. a little bit. Because he's, he, he's razor thin. Yeah. And I think they moved him into the starting lineup and kind of changed role a little bit, and he was kind of struggling with that. But he is very capable, as we saw in that game in any big game. So um, I, I don't hold that too much against Platteview, and mostly because who, who else are you yeah. jumping ahead of him? I, I, do, I was impressed with what I saw from Scott against Bennington. Um, I like their top three, obviously. Um, Luke, Luke Scar and Charlie Fletcher's a, a good duo, the seniors there. And Grant Dvorak, I think what he does kind of on both ends, shooter, good defender, uh, he's a pretty solid number three. After that, it's kind of questionable what you're going to get. Their bench is really young. I and, like their team defense. Yeah. Oh, th- and that's that's the thing that always makes Scott phenomenal. I like their team defense. And they, they were It's hard. It's hard. Then. You just don't see them. You know, a lot of slips, and, you know, everybody has this little pin down and those flare screen act. They don't give up a lot of – Easy shots around the basket. Well, and Bennington is an interesting team because um, their leading scorer, Austin Holtz, is a terrific shooter. Doesn't need any space to really get it off. Um, they had Dwarak basically face guarding him the whole time. And while they did that, they didn't compromise the rest of their defense. They were still able to mm. make it so tough on everybody else. While he was no help the entire game, he's jumping through screens. They did a phenomenal job of taking him completely out of that game while not giving up easy opportunities for other guys because of that. And that's kind of when you choose to face guard, that's one less help defender that gives the rest of the guys more space, more opportunities to go one-on-one. And they held up uh, firm. The other four guys did their job. So that it's a, like you said, that's a great phenomenal team defense because they're like physically, they don't have yeah. a guys that you would think like are, they don't have a dominant rim protector. They don't have a guy that's necessarily a, a pit bull on the ball. That's really going to make life tough. It's just five guys that play well together. And, and that's what make them so tough. So they kind of had some of their struggles early on, but I feel like kind of those other guys, like James Ninifu, uh, Sam Kudrin, and, and those bench guys that are coming off the bench are starting to kind of find the roles a little bit more and settling into um, what they need to do after kind of being bench pieces, not playing a lot last year. Who's your game to watch in, in Class B if we're going with Central and West Side in Class A? We'll talk to Coach Spooner. Uh, on Friday morning on Mount Michael. Hopefully we won't be a jinx. What's what's kind of your game to watch? Yeah, we'll have to see if they get that Norris-Mount Michael game rescheduled at some point. I haven't seen any, any news on that, but I think probably uh, Norris at Scott on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a huge one, and that'll uh, that, that'll give Scott a chance to say, hey, it, it we belong up in that, that top tier along with Mount Michael. Because like you said, I, I feel pretty good about my, Mount Michael and Norris at 1-2 right now. And Mount Michael is the only team in Class B that hasn't lost to a Nebraska team. 
Um, Still sitting so, at 14 yeah. and one, right? And, and that one loss was to that team. Uh, was it yeah, 16 and one now. Uh, 16, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the team from down from uh, Missouri, I believe, um, or somewhere they they were in that kind of vet um, down there. Um, so that that that's. I feel good about that one. That that we're going to learn a lot from that about. All right, it's got ready. Have they come all the way back from where they were at the start of the season when uh, Mount Michael kind of ran them off their own floor to now being a, a legit contender again? Yeah, looking to take a a, a leap maybe uh, to that two spot with the big one from uh, Norris being idle on the weekend against <laughs> Mount Michael, which I think we both were kind of <laughs> that was the one we were waiting on. <laughs> yeah, old Mother Nature has a way of always being right. Yeah. It's, I'm just glad we were able to get in some games on Saturday. Um, but yeah, yeah we, that, we were kind of waiting with a bated breath. We yeah. we started to kind of sit clear up late, and we saw some of the cancellations, and we're like, oh, man, we may not get this in. Yeah, it, it's just tough with getting people getting out to Firth. Like, that's – it's not an easy place to get to. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Got to go through a couple of – You're like, of, wait, where do we turn? <laughs> I thought we were going to link eh, – yeah. just down the road a keep little going, bit. Keep going, keep going. Got some, some dirt uh, gravel roads kind of involved there at one point, so – Probably wouldn't be smart trying to Best get Best kept out secret, there. though, with a fantastic facility. Oh, yeah. it's I've been out there to that gym a, a few times this season. It's a terrific place to go watch it. And it originally was redone right after the, the 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 weather damaged their original structure, right? And you're just thinking, wow, it's an immaculate facility. And it's kind of like it's – the gym is like in their middle school like <laughs> section. It's kind of it's probably the best it's, middle school. It's, gym. it's its own little yeah. community. They big things going. We've kind of been forecasting this from from Norris for a long time. Uh, that'll wrap us up. I mean, we just keep going and going and going. Um, we'll be back next week, man. Got, got a lot of. I'll be out in Grand Island all day long on Saturday, so we're gonna have a lot to talk about from the Heartland Hoops Classic. <laughs> I, I, in addition to the big week, game I week. will be in Maybe. Lincoln. Uh, watching a double dipper uh, and get a chance to catch Lincoln East firsthand. And then Friday, we'll both be at West Side Central. We don't like to both be in the same place. We try to split it up. But we'll make an allowance yeah. this week. It might I, be, it I, might I be the best one on today. Side. Yeah, here we go. Uh, that's Jacob Padilla. I'm ODB. This is Nebraska Preps Postgame. We'll be back next week. A Huda Media Production.